So let's talk about the G9 Mark II overheating. This did happen to me, and I know you're probably asked, did I have it set to high temperature mode? Yes, I did. The Lumix G9 Mark II does overheat in certain conditions. We're going to talk about it. I'm going to go through a lot of comments. We're going to look at some video reviews. We're going to talk about this issue because I do think it's important. And I want to clarify some things as well as just explain some things I think get lost in translation for whatever reason. People end up showing up in the comments, you know, really trying to defend Lumix. And I'm I'm not hating on Lumix. I'm not, uh, I've been a huge fan for a long time and I really want to love the G9 Mark II, but I have to be honest and I have to explain things when they happen because I want you to understand if you're in a similar situation, shooting like I'm shooting, you might encounter some of these same problems. So we're going to talk about the problems. We're going to talk about the solutions. First of all, to cut straight to the point, if you don't want to watch this, it'll probably be a long video. If you don't want to watch all of it, that's totally fine. I'm going to be rambling, ranting a little bit, but I'll cut to the point. Main point is I was shooting open gate outside in direct sun. It was not a hot day. It was 84 degrees Fahrenheit. The direct sun, I think, is the main culprit. It heats up the black body of the G9 Mark II, and it just gets too hot. This happens a lot of time with all sorts of electronics. Even your phone, if it's sitting out in the sun, it'll often get really, really hot. You'll get the thermal warning, and it needs to cool off for a moment. The G9 Mark II suffers from a similar problem because it has no fan, it has no active cooling built in. So if it's in direct sunlight, it's going to bake even if the ambient temperature is a little bit more comfortable, like 84 degrees Fahrenheit. That's you're not, it's not super hot. I live in Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona. It gets quite hot here in the summer. 84 is nothing. So if you are shooting with the G9 Mark II, keep it out of the sun and I would also recommend probably not relying on open gate or shooting open gate in those moments. I think that's also quite taxing on the system. Maybe step it down to just regular 4K, something like that. I happen to need open gate often because of what I'm shooting is multi-aspect, multi-platform. I'm taking vertical crops from the 4x3, doing the whole multi-aspect production. I've been doing that for quite a while. It's part of my normal workflow to make a vertical video and horizontal video at the same time. So I need things like open gate. And I do need to film outside quite often. And sometimes you can't avoid direct sunlight. It's I, I'd prefer it if I could be a little bit more comfortable. But it is the case that sometimes it, it's going to happen. And I was outside filming for a period of two to three hours. Now, this is another point of clarification. People thought I was filming continuous for two to three hours. No, it wasn't like a two-hour recording or a three-hour recording. Although, I mean, I have been in situations like that. This was not the circumstance. It was start, stop. It was clip after clip. I was recording frequently. I was doing regular intervals, you know, a minute, two minutes, three minutes, 30 seconds, as we do, getting shots. And I was outside for a couple hours doing this, like a normal work day. This was not a 10, 12-hour thing where I was just baking in the sun all day and it finally over overheated. It was... I'd say pretty regular casual filming, but two major issues, probably open gate. I have to do a little bit more testing to confirm, but I would guess that that's quite taxing. I also, here's the rig so you can see it. So this is the G9 Mark II with the 10 to 25 lens. I love this lens, great lens. I've got some extra battery on the bottom charging with USB-C PD. The PD is important. I've done a video on that and why you need to know about USB-C PD. HDMI is another thing. So if you are recording with the G9 Mark II, some things you can do to keep it cool, don't run HDMI. That's probably more taxing, sending another video signal. Don't shoot open gate if you can help it, and just avoid direct sunlight. And there's some other solutions we'll get into in a moment. But I do want to point out that, you know, a lot of people have said that the G9 Mark II was not marketed as a video camera. And that is true. We're going to watch the video, and just to confirm, this was not marketed as a video camera. It was marketed as a photography camera. Now, granted, it's a video telling you that it's a photography camera, but hey, we'll give them the grace. No one's using a monitor in this video. It's all you know, photography. Doesn't look like anyone's shooting. I mean, it kind of looks like a shooting video, but photo. Got it. Again, no shoulder rig, nothing like that. So, this is photography. I get it. Oh, well, except for the slow motion, 4K 120 slow motion. That's video, but for photo, handheld, yep. Photos. 
Nice. Yep. So it's got that good weather sealing. People are afraid that if there's a fan built in, we limit that. I understand. Real time light. Could be for photos, but also kind of for video. But I, I'll, yep, photos. So, marketed as a photography camera. Totally understand if you go to the Amazon page, the BNH page, Panasonic. there's, yes, Panasonic, finally. Let's say Lumix, because that's what the cameras are, are branded. They're Lumix, but sure, made by Panasonic. So, if you go to the product pages, it's a photography camera. However, it has some incredible video features. And so, if you read reviews of this camera, like this one from DP Review, which, I mean, there's plenty of sites that do camera reviews. This is just one I picked. If you search on here for something like overheating, I don't know, let's see. I'll just search heat. How about nothing comes up? Okay, that's interesting. So the other thing I searched was fan. And you can find moments in reviews about the G9 Mark II where it'll talk about you know, this is the same body style as the S5 Mark II. It's the same outer shell, but without fan vents and with a different lens mount and sensor inside. Okay, so it doesn't have the fan vents. What's the consequence of that? We can see that it uh, has improved autofocus. Uh, why would anyone buy a GH6 over the G9 Mark II? Rest assured that the CF Express card support and the built-in fan let the GH6 re retain its hybrid crown for now. Okay, so they're calling the GH6 the hybrid crown, which I agree with. I, I actually really appreciate that. Now, Panasonic says that the G9 II shooter should think of this camera more as a B-cam than a primary run-and-gun setup, and that the lack of a fan might become an issue when shooting high-res video in hot environments. So this is the general consensus around the G9 Mark II, and we'll get into even more of this, but it's all this kind of like loosey-goosey, maybe, might, mm, sometimes, could be, uh, we're, we're not going to be precise, we're not going to be specific, we're not going to say that it will be an issue, hey, don't shoot in direct sunlight, hey, this is the, this is the safe operating temperature. It's like, eh, maybe, maybe, which I just think is a little misleading. It's not a lie. I mean, yeah, they're saying the GH6 is, you know, it's got the fan. The G9 Mark II doesn't have the fan. Maybe that's a pro Maybe it's not. We'll see. So let's see what else does it say in here about the... It's fantastic. Yes, fantastic. If you're a big fan of the original, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about fans. Uh, yes, the Lumix G9 Mark II, unlike the very similar S5 Mark II, lacks fan vents at the bottom. Okay, so if you're looking for something that's got the fan vents, S5 Mark II, way to go. And here we get, the, when the G9 Mark II was released, Panasonic called it a launching point for video. The fact is that the G9 Mark II is very close to Panasonic's official Micro Four Thirds video camera, the GH6. Okay, the G9 Mark II can do almost everything the GH6 can, bar the longer recording times and uh, 5.7K 60P capture that the GH6's fan-assisted design delivers. Now, I... This must not be, yeah, that's not, we're not talking about open gate there. We're talking about 6K60. So that's a mode on the GH6. I think is what it's saying. I've never actually used it myself. I've never had a reason to, but the GH6 has this extra mode where the G9 does. Okay, so I understand. Let's limit the modes based on the capabilities of the camera. But again, we're saying the GH6 can have this bonus mode because of the fan, but the G9 Mark II can do basically everything the GH6 can do. And that's pretty much it. Okay, so let's go watch another, let's go take another take. Over at uh, Petapixel, we've got Chris and Jordan, great guys, I love their content, love their reviews. They've actually been shooting on the G9 Mark II for all their reviews recently. And it says, you know, this was shot on the Panasonic G9 Mark II. Now they should say it was shot on the Lumix G9 Mark II, but you know, I'm not gonna nitpick, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna point fingers. Oh, and I should mention, I don't, this this is all no cap okay that's why the hat is not on no cap fingers crossed it looks good all right let's talk about video capabilities of the g9 too and initially i didn't really have my hopes high panasonic was very clear this is not a camera specifically for video jordan you're going to be disappointed and then they kept talking about the features on it and it basically had everything that was already offered in the gh6 there are 
That sounds promising. Okay, let's see where this goes. Some record modes that you can't record to the SD card, but this still allows you to output to an external SSD through the USB port. So you've still got access to all those super high data rate files. So it's pretty compelling that we've got all those same GH6 features, but this actually offers some stuff you won't even find in their premium. Ooh, it's the same as the GH6, but it's got even more. What 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 could the G9 Mark II have? A micro four thirds video body. For starters, we've got the phase detect autofocus that Chris has already talked about, and I love using this. We love some good phase detect. It's got the phase detect autofocus, so it does what the GH6 does plus phase detect autofocus. Excellent. This sounds very promising. It's on the S5 II, S5 IIx. It actually performs a little better here, probably because of the faster readout. Be better than the S5 II. Wow, with the autofocus, incredible. But the other thing is, we had some real issues where you got the dynamic range boost mode in the GH6, which gave it very good dynamic range, but it was, it was at 2000 ISO. Yeah, 2000 ISO. Ugh, gross. So, so I had to use a lot of ND filters to take advantage of it. Now, if you're shooting log, your native is 500. So I was concerned, like, what are the compromises in order to do what are the compromises? Let's find out. That, But looking at this camera against the GH6, first of all, shooting at base, 500 ISO, you can see we've got quite a bit more dynamic range in the G9 Mark II. Incredible, more dynamic range, I love it. But also, if we look at 2000 ISO with dynamic range boost turned on on the GH6, we're getting very similar noise levels between the two bodies, so there's no real downside to the new way that they're implementing that dual gain architecture. It's really smart and I'm very impressed by it. Okay, so the okay, so very feeling very good about the G9 Mark II. Feeling very good. Ibis is more effective for stills, but what about for video? Well, it is very stable in this, but if you're using ultra wide lenses, we're starting to see the effect that you do run into, especially with Canon cameras, where you get some wobble at the edges, and it's an optical phenomenon. What's really interesting is if you turn on the digital stabilization on this now, it will correct for that. So you can use. Wow, we got some digital stabilization correction going on for video. I love it. Wider lenses and still get very good performance. Now there is a small crop when you do this, but if you plan to use ultra wides, I think this is definitely worth it. And it's cool to have the option. With this enabled, I'd say it's some of the most stable handheld footage I've gotten out of any camera. The most stable handheld footage. Mwah chef's kiss and if you put it on the boost is mode it is almost like shooting with a tripod if you've got a static shot so then what purpose okay all right now get do the rug pull we've we've sold me on the g9 mark ii what's the catch does the gh6 serve well it still does have some advantages it's got that tilt slash articulating display that oh the lovely screen the tilty flippy screen on the GH6 masterpiece that I really love. And the GH6 HDMI port can output raw video to an Atomos Ninja 5. We don't have that compatibility here yet, but obviously the- Which I think it did come later on the G9 Mark II or it's coming, or I think there's firmware for the G9 Mark II that lets you do that. The biggest one is the fan because- The biggest one is the fan. Okay, break it to me. Rip the bandaid off. Just like me, you know, cameras can overheat. And when I overheat, I have a delicious, mm old-fashioned from Eau Claire Distillery, who is not a sponsor yet. We're working on that. Oh, so it's like overheating. This is like a casual jokey thing. So it's like not that big of a deal. Okay, whew, I was worried. But let's talk about overheating on the G9 II. I was very worried because there is no fan in this body. And shooting at our usual 21 degrees Celsius indoors, I was very impressed recording. Oh, very impressed. Okay, so not worried, very impressed, cool. 5.8K open gate recording. It was able to shoot for an hour and 36 minutes until the battery died. Then we switched over to 4K 60p, same thing, exactly an hour and 36 minutes before the battery conked out. The only thing I could do to get this camera to overheat in room temperature is the 4K 120 recording, but even then it did 26 minutes, which is nearly three hours in actual payback at 24. I don't think many people will be shooting. Yeah, so like not many people are going to shoot at 4K 120 for a hundred, for 26 minutes. Goodness gracious. Like, what are you doing? Are you some kind of psycho shooting 4K 120 for 26? No one's going to do that. And you, you saw it, it was slipped in there, the room temperature caveat. I think that's important. Shooting that way. So honestly, thermals are very good in this camera. It's not a lot of compromises compared to the GH6. Thermals are very good. Not a lot of compromises compared to the GH6 at room temperature. To me to another nice thing, we've got better battery life on this than the GH6, where usually I can record. Oh, now we're back to the positives. Better battery life. All right. For just over an hour here, I'm generally getting about an hour and a half. That's 50% better battery life, probably because there's not a fan in this thing. You know, it's funny, Panasonic. 
God, man, good thing they removed that fan and got us better, better battery life. Sonic dedicated so much effort to saying this is not for videographers, it's for photographers. But, you know, feature for feature, I think this is their best, most well-rounded video camera, as long as you don't need super long record times in very hot climates. And don't... You don't... Wait a minute. As long as you don't... Wait a minute. Am I... Am I losing... Isn't that what they said in this review? No. This was in March of this year by Jeff Keller, Brendan Neistat, and Richard Butler. That's not Chris and Jordan, but that same language was used. Am I, am I going, like, as long as you don't need, where was it? I was here. I could have sworn I read that exact quote. It's a very close. You can do almost everything that GH6 can, except for the longer recording times. And because the oh, weird, weird. And don't tell Panasonic, but I think this might be my primary video camera for shooting our show. Cheers. So for a camera. Okay, man, that's like the seal stamp of approval. Petapixel saying it, Jordan saying it. Like, I, now, I know I'm being a little silly. It just comes out that way. It's a little, I, the sarcasm is built in, okay? I have nothing against Chris and Jordan. I like this review. I don't think they meant anything dishonest by it. I think the review over at DP Review is also honest. This is probably, you know, just giving you those Panasonic caveats in there. Someone at Panasonic, I, I think, probably told them, hey, we've probably seen this thing overheat, but like they're not giving the specifics of it. They're just talking around it and saying, yeah, for the most part, it does what the GH6 does. It's pretty good, you know, like for the most part. Now, everyone who got this camera got it last year, kind of right after the summer. And all these reviews rolled out, I think, in September timeline or whatever. And then come November, the camera actually releases. So now we're just getting to the spring, summer. People are going to be outside a little bit more. It's actually hotter. The sun's cooking things a little bit more. And I think this will tend to be more of an issue, at least I would suspect, where people run up against this wall that I've hit, which is direct sunlight outside. And you're taking advantage of things the camera can do, like open gate. So if you want to try and go down the rabbit hole and find Lumix G9 Mark II overheating, well, if you search that on YouTube, it's actually kind of hard to find. There's this first video, which we'll watch, but let's see. Okay, the ultimate Micro Four Third camera, that sounds pretty positive. Uh, this is the G9 II versus the S5 IIx, the best Lumix camera for video, just a comparison. Like, I'm searching for overheating. Like, that's what I want to find. I don't want reviews. I want test footage. Did my Lumix give it live up to expectations? You know, too late, better for video, in-depth real world. What do we see? The, the new Micro Four Thirds King, a week of traveling, a unique feature people don't talk about, Lumix overheat, but that's three years ago. So watch this before you buy. All right, so there is this one. All right, we can go to the right, auto-generated section and talk about the temperature. And let's see what Pav S Z has to say. Right. I've done a lot of test recording in the warm conditions here. The camera has got no. Whoa. Let's slow it down. That's too fast. Active cooling system. And initial opinion was that it will not do very well recording video for longer periods of time. But I have really struggled to get it too hot. Okay. I mean, you. I've struggled to get it too hot. Like everything sounds so good about the G9 Mark II. And so even though Panasonic or Lumix didn't market it as a video camera, every reviewer, every person talking about this camera is saying, spec for spec, it's like a GH6, for the most part. UK, and it is September now, so not particularly hot, hot, but I have kept it under LED lights in a room with the heating on, and the camera kept rolling until the cards got full every time. The only setting which caused me some issues was 4K 120p. The camera got too hot after about 20 to 25 minutes of continuous recording. But who on earth needs to record 4K 120p? So again, that's like the same talking point. And maybe, I don't know, they're watching each other's reviews or who knows what's going on. But it's the stress of it's 4K 120. It's after like 20 minutes of doing that. And who's doing that? This is the logo, by the way, that, that shows up. It's this like cooking caution camera symbol for long periods of time if you do this this might not be for you
camera has got recording max temperature setting in which you can allow it to get hotter before the safety mechanism will shoot it down. I have it on all the time and so far had no real issues recording. So this is the funny phenomenon that these cameras are all introducing now. They allow you to enable the kind of high temp boost mode. And so everyone just turns it on all the time. It's just the default because people are like, yeah, just give me give me the high temps video with it the real test will be long-term real world usage especially in summer but for now i wouldn't be very worried taking with me to shoot an event like a wedding with so the real test will come with long-term usage and especially when we get to the summer so when i make a video talking about hey this camera overheats in these conditions and people say well they didn't market it that way blah, 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 you're an idiot all I'm doing is I'm just communicating the experience that I've had and giving you the warning saying, hey, watch out for this. This is, could be a problem if you film in these certain conditions like I was, and which I think are not, they're not so uncommon. 84 degrees Fahrenheit, filming for a couple hours outside, again, not continuous recording, using things like open gate. I, I'm not, I am maxing out the camera specs, but I'm not pushing it past its limits, if that makes sense at least from my perspective. So when I'm sharing an update or giving this information, it's not a Panasonic lied to us. I mean, maybe that comes across in the way I, I speak and maybe, maybe I feel that to a certain degree, but I think it's more of like, hey, I wanna let you know this because no one else is letting you know this. That's what I'm talking about. So I don't think any of these people are lying. I don't think they're false advertising or anything like that. It's marketed as a photography camera. But when the general hype and zeitgeist around a camera is, this thing's great, it's just like a GH6, but with phase detect, and oh, is that amazing? We finally have phase detect and micro four thirds, and oh, look, the dynamic range boost works at ISO 500, and oh, look, the stabilization is better. All these things make it sound really appealing, and... I had never seen anyone say, oh, but also it could overheat if it's in direct sunlight. It's more or less, well, if you're shooting 4K 120, then you might. With, but with a second camera to back it up, just in case. Ibis, the in-body image stabilization is worth talking about as well. This is world-class here and not only makes possible to shoot video handheld smoothly to get... Right, so then we're back to the, the positives again. So let's go take a look at the... Uh, actual overheating one because I think this is this is pretty good but granted this was only a month ago so I didn't even have the opportunity to see this video before I bought my G9 Mark II and now it's it's been two months so it's too late to return it um, and so that's probably the, the the unfortunate downside is I'll probably try and sell the G9 Mark II but by telling you that it has these problems or this one problem really I'll, I won't over exaggerate but by saying that it has a problem I'm almost <laughs> limiting the resale that i'm like shooting myself in the foot why do i do this gigs Let's check it just out by leaving this on a tripod all right so geeky nerdy techie let's see what's going on this is shane i just want to give you an update on the panasonic g9 mark ii so when i first got my hands on the loaner unit of this i did all the overheating and thermal tests just with the camera set to standard and even then in the studio or upstairs in the house here i was unable to get this to overheat shooting 4K 25 or 50 until the battery ran out. So same test that everyone else did inside, room temp, can overheat. And that's my experience as well. The G9 Mark II, super reliable. If you want it in like an office setup like this, an indoor cam, some kind of like just normal climate controlled environment, you're probably solid. There was no problems whatsoever. I was also unable to get this to overheat shooting 5.8K open gate. It was just perfect. I let it run. I've shot about four or five of my own gigs just by leaving this on a tripod shooting open gate and it's worked without ever once cutting off or overheating or doing anything. Sure, it got a little bit warm, but I've just never had any issues with it. Testing this out in the studio, the only mode this camera would overheat in was shooting 4K 120 frames per second indefinitely. When I was in Perth... So again, that same test, the 4K 120, okay. In early January, I took the G9 Mark II out for the first time on a 40 degree day and I saw a heat warning message. I changed the thermal temperature to high and I've never seen that again until yesterday. <laughs> and yesterday it wasn't anywhere near as hot. So this survived two 40 degrees Celsius days while- I So 40 degrees Celsius on screen, that's 100 degrees Fahrenheit, much hotter than 84 degrees Fahrenheit. I was in Perth and it managed to overheat it 
on it. And I know, I know for a fact it was 84 degrees because when the camera, my camera, the Gene Mark II overheated on me, I pulled out my weather app on my phone to confirm the ambient temperature because I knew it would be a point of contention of, well, what was the temperature outside? And oh, maybe you're, you're crazy. It's 110. No, no, no. It was 84 degrees Fahrenheit which I don't know what that is in Celsius. Uh, there's probably someone who could do the math. On a 31 degree or 30 degree Celsius day here yesterday. Interestingly enough, the biggest variable here is I think that the sun was hitting the back of the camera for an extended period of time because when I felt the back of the camera, I was like, wow, that's way hotter than 40 degrees Celsius, which is what this is rated to. So while the ambient temperature wasn't 40 degrees Celsius, black conducts heat and it's just one of those sad realities of electronics. The hotter they get, the quicker you can overheat them basically and it will just retain the heat because there's no active cooling if you know the channel you know i shoot predominantly with the s5 mark ii x as my main run and gun camera this is pretty much the camera i use anytime i'm filming outside of the house if i'm shooting with lumix if i'm doing something with a sony camera or lens i'm generally taking the fx30 or fx3 they both have active cooling which is one of the benefits over the g9 mark ii but this has been so good that i still trust it and after shooting many gigs for over an hour in 5.8K and never seeing an overheating warning or anything, it's been super reliable. But again, just be careful that you're not hitting the back of the camera with too much direct sunlight. I think that's where I got it to overheat. Today, shooting outside, being that it was warmer than the time it overheated, it was fine. It's crazy how it works, but I was more conscious of not having the back of the body really getting slammed from direct sunlight so yeah just a quick update video i hope this has been helpful if you have any comments or different situations where you already own this camera you've seen some overheating let everybody know down in the comment section it really helps everybody panasonic did market this as a photo hybrid camera although i've been using it predominantly as my main video camera for micro four thirds because it's just so good it's a really great camera for video i just have now found that it has a limitation when it comes to heat anyway thanks again i will catch you very soon See ya. All right. Thank you, Shane. I wanted to let Shane finish because he's very positive. He's very enthusiastic. And that's definitely a takeaway that you can have and feel good about the Genome Mark II. Again, my video talking about why I can't recommend it is not saying that the title was not the Genome Mark II sucks, that it was not the Genome Mark II is bad, is terrible, is awful, is the worst camera, is none of that. The title is I can't recommend the Lumix Genome Mark II and I explained why because it overheated on me in a situation that I thought was pretty reasonable, not crazy. I'm not intentionally trying to roast it. I'm not holding up a magnifying glass, burning ants, and also trying to burn the G9 Mark II at the same time. I'm just filming outside and it happened to be sunny and it was 84 degrees. So let's go read some comments, shall we? Because I think that's, that's the best part. It just warms my heart. Did you change your name on here? Yes, I did, to Tographer because photographer, cinematographer, trying to bridge that gap, explain it in a way that it's all about content creation. It doesn't really matter if it's photo, if it's video, hybrid, mirrorless, it's it's all one and the same. We're creating content. You can I think of myself as a photographer sometimes for certain jobs. I think of myself as a cinematographer for certain jobs. It really just depends, but I like cameras and equipment that can achieve both results. That's why I'm not a huge fan of strobes because they limit me to photography when I really can't use strobes for video. So I appreciate continuous lights. The things like Aperture and Godox and all the other companies have been making over the last few years are, are quite nice. I prefer cameras and lenses that work both for video, cinematography, as well as photo photography. So that's why the channel is called Tographer. I don't know if I'm gonna keep that forever, but my name is Strons, that's, it always has been. But I just thought that the channel title opened up some more possibilities. Also, is that an MXL 990? This is an MXL 990. That is this microphone. I still got my GH4. One day someone might push me to a new fancy GH5. I uh, wish Blackmagic Design would have a micro four-third camera with an ND filter. That'd be nice. JVC did it. Exactly. <clears throat> we need more built-in NDs. I, that's a great comment. I, it has not really much to do with the video, but thank you, Chris. Cliff, I will not ever buy any camera again if it is not actively cooled. In 2024, no fan, no buy. No fan, no buy. I like it. I kept my GH6 only because the G9 Mark II had no fan. I'll wait for the GH7. I think this is smart, Cliff. I was, I was led astray. 
by all the people claiming that the G9 Mark II was a GH6 with phase detect. It's basically a GH6 with phase detect. It's basically a GH6 with phase detect and better dynamic range boost. That's not true. I want to clarify that the fan on the GH6 does actually matter, which is kind of good in hindsight, I think, to make the point that it actually was needed on the GH6, even though surprisingly enough from the GH5 and the GH4, like none of those had any kind of major fan components that I'm aware of. None of those cameras overheated. But hey, I guess the fan was needed on the GH6. Maybe it's the higher bit rates. Maybe it's the better codecs. I'm, I'm not a, an engineer. All I can do is point out the limitations that I face and hopefully we can find some solutions and we'll just work through it all together. Because again, the G9 Mark II, it does a lot. I'm not saying it's a bad camera. I just can't recommend it the way I would want to if it had been an actual GH6 plus face detect. That I could recommend, but we don't have that. All right. 6K open gate is pretty taxing. I rarely shoot outdoor for longer periods of time, so no problem for me. My GH5 does five, something K as well, and I never overheat them. Yes, the GH5 doesn't overheat. It would have been helpful if you told us how long you've been filming, if the camera's in direct sunlight when you did not film. It looks a bit like user error to me. So if you're gonna, if you're gonna, just helpful advice to anyone on the internet. If you're gonna tell someone that it's user error when they've spelled out exactly what they've done, it's not helpful. <laughs> it's really, it's really not. So I kind of go back and I kind of follow up with that comment. But it, I've, I've explained, I've explained the situation. I, I'm not putting the camera in an oven. I'm not actively. I'm outside in the sun. What do you want me to do? How's a user error? Well, go inside. Sometimes you have to film outside. The G9 Mark II is great video. Try setting the thermal management to high. What do people do before fans? Yeah, it, it was set to high. Of course, you oh, that is default now. Everyone sets their camera to high temp because why would you not? What was your thermal management setting? Was it high or normal? Again, high. I think I said that. Maybe I said it too late in the video and people didn't get to that part, but it definitely was set to high. Get the Ulanzi fan. So if you noticed in one of those videos we watched, he was running the fan on the back as well. It's easy to attach. Sony users are using it in plenty of cameras because they overheat way too much. So I did order one of these. I think they're only like $40. They're, they're pretty affordable. I think it's silly that you have to buy something like this. And I'm not even convinced that it'll actually work because if I'm not getting to the internals with the fan, is it just going to cool the back? But regardless, I will give it a shot and we'll try it out and I'll let you know if it works or not. Because if it solves the problem, then, you know, like that's that's not bad. That's a good solution. I'd say $40 fan upgrade if you need it for certain situations. You know, okay, I'll, I'll make it work. We'll see. Uh, I got my fingers crossed. Panasonic has never claimed that G9 Mark II can work forever without overheating in any condition. Of course, that would be an absurd claim. I don't think any camera manufacturer could say that this will work forever without overheating in any condition. Oh yeah, you just throw it, throw it down into the, uh, go to Mordor, throw it in Mount Doom, let it burn in the lava. Oh, oh, why did it overheat on me? No, no one's asking for that. On the contrary, I would always prefer to have the features and know that in certain circumstances, there will be a limit. If a function is critical, then by the tool that Panasonic claims can do the job. So yes, that's that, I'm telling you what the limit is. That's the point of my video. Because Panasonic didn't set the limit. The reviews, the, the other people didn't set the limit. They just said, oh, 4K 120, if you record for 26 minutes, it will overheat. That's a limit, but it's not all the limitations. The true limitation is don't put it in the sun because then it will overheat. Was this from continuous recording or just having it out in the sun? So I tried to explain it's not a two hour recording. It was, but I was recording continuously, but not, not actually continuously. So that's probably the point of clarification. Rolling like clips after clip, after clip, after clip, after clip, you know how we shoot. How do you feel about using the tilt -a cooling fan? It would be great if someone did a proper review of this fan. I looked up the tilt -a fan, but it seems like it's just for the Sony cameras. Uh, check out the Ulanzi cooling fan, second version. So another person talking about Ulanzi. I'll check that out. Uh, I'll see how that works. tilt -a cooling fan, thanks for the update. Good to know about the overheating. You're welcome. I'm glad it helped someone. As someone who owns the G9, I was also really let down that they made it larger full frame size basically with no fan. That is unfortunate. If you're going to take the body style of the S5 Mark II, but then omit the fan, 
it almost makes you wonder, are they doing that on purpose to then save, you know, for a GH7, whatever it might be, oh, this one has the thermal management, this one is the, the better video one, of course, it costs more, and we remove those features from the Gina Mark II. I don't know the, the how these companies make the decisions they make. But I do know that when you're shooting, you want to know that the camera is going to work and it's going to work reliably, or you're at least going to know when those limitations hit. And that's harder to quantify with some of these more ambiguous, vague things of like, it could overheat, it might, you never know. That's kind of hard to trust. Uh, Rhett, oh, Rhett, uh, I've talked to Rhett a few times. Thanks for leaving a comment. This reminds me of, I think, Gerald and Dunn's video on overheating and just how inconsistent thermal management on any cameras are. I would, uh, just thinking of that. I'm sure people have shot this at 100 degrees and no problems, and others shoot at like 80 in direct sun. Exactly. I appreciate your update and understand your refrigeration. I agree with you 100%. Whoa, that if I didn't work in certain condition temperatures, then that should have been made clear in the marketing and should have come with a warning. I agree. That's just all it needs. We just need to say, hey, this watch out. This could happen. I disagree with you in certain respects, though. Totally fine. You can disagree. I'm all for it. I don't agree that they shouldn't add these excellent video features just because in certain extreme conditions, they will cause it to fail. As long as the warning is clear, that gives me the benefit of having them, but not relying on them in all conditions. I, that's all I'm asking for. A little bit more upfront clarification and disclaimer of what the limitations are. And then in the camera, if there's a way to like, for example, I'm just guessing that if you're not recording open gate, that might help. Oh, I'm not using HDMI, like that might help. I would like to know in the camera what's what's higher rated and what's lower rated in, in terms of reliability. And if I could record, you know, continuous at 4K and that would be fine, but open gate is more likely to overheat. I'm kind of just making assumptions, guessing, trying to figure it out. But I think that'd be a lot better if that was clarified some way. This mode is more likely to overheat. If you need it to not overheat, use this mode and that one's safe. Something like that I think would be very helpful. If I need them in all situations and need to rely on them, then I should choose the GH6. The G9 Mark II is not an upgrade on the GH6. It isn't a GH6 II or a GH7. It sounds as if what you were hoping for was the updated GH6. Of course, I think we're all hoping for that. There is a reason there is a fan on the GH6 as we know now. I don't want a fan on my G9, and I'm glad one wasn't included on the G9 Mark II. I'm sorry it has not met your expectations. Thank you for your being your sympathy. And again, I agree any limitations should have been made clear by Panasonic. I'm sure the upgraded G6 will appear with the better autofocus in due course. Just came across your channel recently, enjoyed your videos, and found them informative. Well, thank you. That was a very nicely worded disagreement, and I, I generally agree with everything you just said. I have no, no issues with that. Bro, this was the only reason I bought the S5 II for events. I wasn't sure, but the risk had me on pause. That was my same thoughts when I was weighing Lumix for Sony. I can't afford to miss footage from overheating. Exactly. And I think in hindsight, I do wish, if I was going to roll the dice on the G9 Mark II or the S5 Mark II, I really wish I'd gone S5 Mark II. I would have to buy the full-frame lenses, and I'd have to start investing in L-mount. And I'm not sure if I'm ready for that just yet. I'm really torn, like E-mount... You know, if Sony fixes a few things, it's quite tempting. But if, if Lumix and Panasonic get the, you know, they can really seal the deal if they bring out some, some helpful features. So it's really, I'm at that, you know, I'm just ready for that. I really wanted the GH6 with the face detect. <laughs> I think that's what we all want. And the G9 Mark II is like almost that. It's so close. And that's why it's so tempting. But I do think the S5 Mark II is probably, compared to the G9 Mark II, the S5 Mark II has that thermal uh, management, which is, as we see now, very important. Ton Probe, thanks a lot for sharing your experience. I still have my G85 and the GX8. And of course, I'm unhappy with the autofocus while shooting hand camera video. So I've been having the G92 on my wish list since it was announced. But it's a lot of money for me too. So I've decided to wait about a year until some user reports come out. Let's see what other people say about the overheating during the summertime. I'm looking forward to that as well. There are some YouTubers in Australia, they found the same. The G9 II can overheat, especially in the more demanding video modes and in direct sunlight. Okay. It also seems to get very hot. So if it reaches the critical point, you probably don't want to use it handhold. In the past, Panasonic was very strict with the limits and preferred to have a record limit of 30 minutes and even less, but a guarantee that it will work within the temperature range like negative 10 to 40 degrees Celsius. Now everybody's happy that they let it run until it overheats. 
You can try, but you don't get a reliable specification. This was communicated by Panasonic, and they always said the GH6 isn't obsolete because exactly of this kind of professional work. If you need it to run it reliable over the whole day under all kinds of hard conditions, you need a camera that is built for this. I generally agree. Fortunately, I didn't upgrade my GH5 yet. My camera never overheated on me after seven years using it at any weather condition. GH5, rock solid. An upgrade will be worth it for me when it has better autofocus system in the Micro Four Thirds line and that I don't have to worry about overheating, especially over the summer. So glad that I didn't upgrade yet. Thanks for the video. So this kind of, it's if you read between the lines, you start to see what everyone wants. I want the phase detect but I also want the reliability. I want the GH6, but with phase detect. I want that autofocus, but it's gotta not overheat, you know? So when you're looking at the market and people are making choices about what they're buying, you're gonna be pushed and pulled in different directions. And it's frustrating to, to want something that doesn't exist and try and grab the other thing that's close enough and then be told, well, you bought the wrong thing. You should have bought this other thing. But that other thing doesn't have the thing you want either. It's kind of a little bit of a game of whack-a-mole. So you say, I want phase detect autofocus. So the G, uh, micro four thirds. So the GNM Mark II, oh, that's, that's super tempting. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna grab it. And then, oh, it overheats though. And then people will just say, well, you should go buy the GH6 because that has the thermal management. Yeah, but the GH6 doesn't have phase detect autofocus. So now I'm just, I'm just going in circles. And someone will say, well, then go over to Sony and get one of, but that doesn't have shutter angle. That doesn't have open gate. Okay, well, what then you really need is to upgrade to the cinema line and end up spending twice, three times for in what in some cases are really arbitrary features. Now it sounds like Sony is catching wind and they're starting to catch up. They're going to start doing shutter angle. I don't know what Lumix is going to do once Sony... Uh, let's a cat out of the bag and let's every all their users use shutter angle on their cameras finally after a decade there's these little things and the th fan is like a bigger thing but things like shutter angle open gate these these sh should become pretty standard i would hope pretty soon but we're still playing the whack-a-mole game of i want this okay well then you go get it well oh but not that you need to go to this other camera okay well i'm over here oh but that one doesn't do this other thing okay so i'm over here I'm not asking for a camera to, to film on, underwater even without a, a housing or anything crazy. It's just normal camera operating procedure type stuff. Like I'm asking for crazy stuff like built-in ND filters, which is wild apparently. Because according to the market, there's no one really doing it all that, all that well or that common in this type of camera. But I think it's super valuable and really important. And I've been asking for it for a long time, long time. Just put some NDs in there. Put them electronic NDs in. No, they, they can't do it. Fortunately, I didn't have, we read that one. What does the G9E2 user manual say about recording in 6K open gate heat and generally the camera's heat management? Any warnings or cautions in the manual? Well, guess what, Marcus? I'm, I'm one of those crazy people that saves the box and I got the manual right here. I got the documents, we got the receipts. So this is the manual that comes with the G9 Mark II. It's pretty small, pretty flimsy. You might've been expecting a little bit more, but it's basically a piece of paper like you would uh, assemble a camping tent. That's the instruction manual for the G9 Mark II. Nowhere in here is there anything about overheating. Now it does say, a warning, there's a risk of fire, explosion, and burns. So do not disassemble heat above 60 degrees Celsius that's 140 degrees Fahrenheit, or incinerate. So don't incinerate the camera. That would be user error, and it probably would risk a fire or explode. It does say that in here, but there's no other point talking about anything uh, like overheating or shooting video. There's taking pictures. It just tells you how to do it. It says recording videos, You know, rotate the dial, pick your mode, press the video, one, two, three, yes, 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 cautions. For use firmware of your camera okay splash resistant be sure to perform trial recordings in advance be careful with regards to copyrights it's important you don't want to get sued caution with strong light beams such as laser light good to know that is a thing watch out for lasers oh keep this unit as far away as possible from electromagnetic electromagnetic equipment such as microwave ovens tvs video games etc do not put this camera in a microwave it's a bad idea that's really it. There's nothing else in here as far as overheating. So 
I checked Marcus, I checked the manual. That's it. Nothing else comes in the box. That's all we got. Don't put it in a microwave. Don't incinerate your camera. And that's and that's where we're at. That's that's the story of the G9 Mark II. And is it a good camera? I think it is. Do I like Lumix? I do. I have no hard feelings. I'm not. <laughs> it's not a betrayal. I'm, I don't think they lied. I'm just pointing out that this camera is not a GH6 with phase detect. It is actually a G9 Mark II. And that's what it is. It is a photography camera, just as they said it was. And it can do some incredible video things as long as you treat it right and you baby it a little bit. Don't let it get in the sun. Give it some sunscreen. Lotion it up. It'll get too hot. In general, though, you'll probably be fine. It's probably not going to overheat unless you're pushing it to those limits. And I will be following up talking about if I can get it to work with some of those fan cooling devices. I don't like to have to go down that road. I think it's... I think it enables these companies to just keep omitting important things like fans. I remember back in the day, Apple made laptops that would get so hot, you could burn your legs. It's called a laptop. You put it on your lap, it would get so, that battery, that laptop, it was a MacBook Pro. I don't remember which year. It was basically like a skillet, but it's kept running because it had fans. It was blowing, basically steam was coming out the sides of that thing. You know, in the cartoons when the characters get so angry, they blow steam out. That was my MacBook Pro, and it kept on running because they had some fans in there, and you hear them. You'd hear them roar up. <sighs> They'd be going. I don't think we need to push it quite that hard. I think just a little just a little exhaust vent, just a little port in there. I'm sure there's a way they can do it and keep it weather-sealed and splash-resistant and all that. I'm sure there's a way. I mean, they did it on the GH6. But that design is a little funky and clunky, and I get it might not be for photography. But I hope you can understand and appreciate that what I'm asking for and what a lot of people are asking for is we want phase detect. We've wanted it for so long. We wanted it on the GH4, wanted it on the GH5, wanted it on the GH4 might be. Definitely wanted it on the GH5, didn't have it, suffered through it. Wanted it on the GH6, st still bought it, suffered through it. And now they're saying, hey, you've got what is essentially on paper, on a spec sheet, it is a GH6 with phase detect. That is so tempting. And I think they kind of knew this, and that's why I don't know if I want to go too far down the conspiracy rabbit hole, but there's a lot of parallels between these reviews when you, when you kind of look at them. You see the same language, the same terminology, the same test scenarios, and you wonder, why is everyone thinking and speaking and doing the same things? Only testing the overheating at room temperature, testing the 4K 120, not, you know, not actually signing off fully that this is a video camera, but basically saying, wink, wink, it's a video camera. It's just a little strange. And I don't know. All things considered, it is a good camera. I will keep using it for now. And I'll see if I can get it to work well. But I wish more people understood that when I'm pointing out a flaw or a critique, that's the point of it. It's to point out that thing so you know about it. Not to say, we'll just go buy a GH6 then. I already have a GH6. I'm pointing the flaw out. In the, <laughs> the excuse is not, oh, go buy the real video camera. Because again, that one doesn't have phase detect. And so, oh, then go buy a Sony. Yeah, but that doesn't have open gate or shutter angle. Okay, well then go buy a cinema camera. It's it's a giant ping pong whack-a-mole game where you're bouncing around between all these different options just saying, yeah, this one is really close. I just want this with a fan. Well, that doesn't exist. Too bad, so sad. Got to wait for the next thing to come out. And I I will. And I'll be I'll be happy to see the next thing because I hope it's all of that, but then you got to add more. Because from my perspective, it's like this could have been the thing that had all those features that worked reliably and consistently. That's what I want. That's what I need. And then the next thing should be the upgrade, not just the fix, not just, hey, it's the G9 Mark II, but with a fan. No, now you got to take it to the next level. You got to fix the problem and advance. So I'm, I'm hopeful to see what's next, but I don't, I don't like this overheating issue. I don't like it. Not one bit. I think we've been... 
We've let these companies get away with too much. The Canon R5, all these Sony cameras just overheating all the time. That's... I. I don't, I don't, then, then I don't think you should be able to advertise that it can do these things if it can't. And that's what it comes down to. It's not fair. And this is probably where I do, I've maybe rubbed some people the wrong way and maybe cause a little bit too much controversy, but I'll say it. It's not fair to advertise or market or say you can do a spec if you can't. That's misleading. It's not lying. It's misleading. I'll say that. And it does upset me. It, it makes me go, Oh, I wish I had known this. I wish more people pointed this out. I wish they were more upfront and more precise with their language. And because I wish that everyone else had done that and they didn't, I feel like I should be the one to say it now. Because if you go search on YouTube, you know, G9 Mark II overheating, you can't really, you don't really find it. You don't see people talking about it. You see people saying this is the greatest Micro Four Thirds camera of all time. Oh, it's the, the new king. It might overheat, maybe. It depends. Well, I'm telling you that in certain situations, if you're in direct sunlight and it's a warm day, not a hot day, a warm day, 84 degrees Fahrenheit is warm, it's not hot, you're in direct sun and you're shooting open gate like I was, that will cause it to overheat in a, in a relatively normal shooting condition. So if no one else is going to say it, I'll say it and we'll go from there.